everyone. Today I wanted to give you a little history lesson, a little story. It's, um, I call it his story. So I wanted to share the story about Jesus after he rose from the cross. Um, and the way I learned these stories and I put this whole history together is because God put me in places for me to learn these things. So along the way, along how I'll be telling the story, I'll also tell you where I actually got the facts from. Um, so in 2016, in 2017, um, the IMBA had their world championships in Italy. So when I went to Italy in 2017, um, it was in Remini and I decided to, hey, I wanna check out more of Italy. I've always been super intrigued about history and math. Like those two things have always been my thing. So, um, so I went after the competition and winning the second world championship. Um, again, I didn't choose going to Italy as the world championship. I just went along with the organization and competed as an athlete, right? So again, I always say that God put me in these places so I could put all these pieces together and I can really learn this for myself and not only for myself, but for everybody else and I can put all the pieces together, right? Um, so again, uh, we go to Italy after the world championships, we go to Rome. So when we went to Rome, we ended up going to the Vatican. Now, uh, when we went to the Vatican, we heard the story that um, after Jesus was crucified, um, the Roman Empire and the world realized that he was the Messiah. And some people still were in disbelief. But um, the story goes, and this is, I learned it when I went to Italy and I went to, um, to learn this, and it was from one of the historians. Um, and they said that in one of those moments, the mother of Constantine had a dream. This was after the crucifixion. This was after he rose. Um, he, she had a dream that, you know what? This was the Messiah. And now, because you did that, you have to do a church. Like, you, now you have to build a church in his name. That's the story. So she tells the dream to her son, which is Constantine. And um, the story goes that in a summer in Italy, when it was hot, it started to snow on top of a little mountain. And that's where the sign was to build this church in his name. And, and the, the story goes on to say that they were supposed to build this church in his name and um, and it was gonna to touch everybody, it was gonna be around the world. So then, of course, the Roman Catholic appeared. And the Roman Catholic um, ended up doing this. And again, you gotta remember, this was an emperor, right? So the emperor, yeah, he's getting all these revelations from his mom, but he's like the boss, right? He's the one that rules everything. Do you really think he was like, okay, let me just do this in his name? Well, he added two things to that. He added um, the number one thing. He added praising saints, right? So in the Catholic religion, there's saints for everything. I mean, I know because I grew up Catholic. Um, and again, um, I'll go through that story in a second. But so, uh, of course, the Roman Empire is going to do this and then impose their thoughts, which is their saints. And again, in the Bible, it says that God, the one thing, well, God hates two things. If you sacrifice his people, which are his lambs. So if you sacrifice his children, he hates that. And the other thing he hates is for you to idolize anything else other than him, right? Nothing else is supposed to be idolized. Not a human, not a saint, like nothing, just him, right? So um, in the Roman Empire, they ended up doing this church. And if you didn't convert, they would kill you, right? So there went the prosecution. So after Jesus um, was rose from the dead, all his people, all his followers ended up fleeing, right? So um, that I ended up learning um, about them fleeing and going to um, Switzerland. That was one of the pieces that I learned barely on this trip in January when I actually went to go visit my friend in Switzerland. And I was able to put the pieces together and I got 
I was able to get the history from the castle that I went. So that's where I got this information. So the story goes that after they came out of Jerusalem, they went in hiding and they went in hiding in France. Well, after Fran in France and in Switzerland, well, what happened was the, the Roman Empire was not allowing this anymore because they were protected by the Templars, right? So they were the people that protected everything to do with Jesus. So actually what they were protecting, it was the people, his actual people, you know? People think that they're relics and certain things, but in all reality, the Templars were, were really protecting their people, the people of Jerusalem. So um, again, they went into hiding, and in the 13th century, the Pope um, ordered for all the Templars to die. They were, it was Friday the 13th, and again, this I learned barely on my last trip to Switzerland in January. Um, and so he ordered everybody to, um, or his people to kill um, all the Templars. So of course, at this moment, they had to flee again. So they ended up fleeing into different parts of Europe. And of course the story goes, um, and this is like where my ancestors, um, I've learned that through um, Casa de Reynoso. Let me see if I have it over here. It's a new book that my nephew uh, published and he traces it, traces back my family. And uh, we have a huge community of Jewish people in Mexico it's a huge community and so it all traced it all back to that how we ended up hiding in Spain and then into Portugal until they were able to get on a ship to go to the new world which the new world was Mexico because we got to remember the Americas it was all the same there was no borders right so they ended up going to Mexico um, and again this is my family um, and a lot of other Jewish people that ended up going to the Americas and uh, for a long time they were there and they were fine but of course the Spaniards ended up getting there and um, this story again I learned it in Switzerland when I went to the chocolate factory so the chocolate factory tells a story of how um, now this is supposed to be the best chocolate in the world right um, and um, it's in Gruyere. It's in a beautiful place in Switzerland. And so the chocolate, the story is that Cortez, along with Maximiliano, ended up going to Mexico, to the New World, to conquer the New World, right? And so they went, and they went with the Aztecs and the Mayans and all that stuff. And uh, supposedly, they were gifted um, a tree. And the tree was the cocoa tree. And uh, of course, we know the story that after that, they ended up massacring and killing all the Indians. Um, and they ended up not leaving until uh, Maximiliano, which this story I actually learned when I went to Budapest. In 2016, I went to the World Championships. And um, I remember when I was sent to Budapest, I was like, where the heck is Budapest? Like, I had no idea. Um, and we ended up going there and from there we ended up going to Vienna. So this story I ended up learning in Vienna in one of the castles. Um, and again, my, um, this is, again, this is got me there by, by competing. So I always say it's like God, you know, um, put me in these places because obviously I didn't have a choice on where these competitions were going to be held. I was just an athlete. So, um, so again, I go to Budapest, and I'll get back to Budapest in a little bit, but then I go to Vienna, and I learned the story when I went to the castle of Francis um, and Sisi, I learned that that king had sent his brother, Maximiliano, to the New World, to Mexico, to conquer Mexico. And uh, we also know that story that when he went to rule that, he called it the New Spain. He called it El Nuevo España. And even my grandfather's, um, my dad's dad's um, birth certificate says that he was born in Nuevo España because for a time being, the Spaniards were there. So um, what happened with that, they didn't end up leaving until Zapata, which was a guy that was a, a, a that was about the revolution, he ended up going and killing Maximiliano, which was the brother of Francis, the king of Vienna, Austria. 
And so I learned all that back in 2016. So again, let's put the, the puzzle together. So um, they ended up leaving, right? The Spaniards ended up leaving, but by the time they left, they had already put in their whole thing about the Catholic Church. You know, they had, of course, we know that when they came here to the Americas, they killed all the Indians, right, if you didn't convert. And they had um, uh, the missions, right? We learned in fifth grade, most of us, uh, that it, they the priests would come, right, from Spain to convince the Indians, the people from the land, to convert to being Catholic because if they didn't convert, they would be massacred, right? And so we know all this history. And then also, of course, where I live, I've learned the history of the Lucianos. You know, I'm surrounded by tribes all around me in, this, in, in the Americas. And it's there was the great massacre that you can look it up. Um, again, they killed so many people in the name of Jesus, but in all reality, they, it was the false God because they were putting a religion. And you gotta remember, God doesn't want a religion. Love is no religion. Um, there's some truth in every religion, right? Because he does um, give people, you know, he does reveal himself to people, right? To, to give them... Um, being able so they can teach other people the truth or to see the light, right? Um, but then again, what ends up happening when they create these religions, they end up putting their own thoughts because we're all human, right? So these humans that created all this, right, they ended up putting their own thoughts. So again, the Roman Empire, which created the Catholics, ended up putting all their things into it to better themselves, to control the mass. So it was kind of like them saying that it was for Jesus, but in all reality, it was uh, for them, you know, to glorify them. They had saints and they had people that you would have to bow down to. And God doesn't want that. He never taught that when Jesus was walking among us. Um, and I heard all these stories as well when I went to go visit um, churches around the world. Um, every time I travel, I love to go to a church and I hear all these stories. So when I went to Italy, because I've been to um, Italy twice already, uh, one of the times when I went to Italy, I also learned that um, that he, you know, of course he's going to reveal himself and um, give messages throughout, but again, you know, people end up changing it all around, right? So uh, when we were in Italy, and where was I going with this? Um, you, Anyways getting back to um, getting to the Americas, right? They came here, They anybody that didn't want to convert, they would kill them, and we all know that story. And little by little, we kind of been, you know, kind of asleep. We, we haven't put the pieces together. Um, again, I think we've been in a time where um, God has had us all asleep because he didn't want us to see all like the craziness and all the harmful things that were in the world and how the world was really working because just like there's good people trying to help people there's a lot of people evil in the world and um, just as much as we pray to God our Creator and nothing else there's a lot of people that pray to um, the opposite and so all that is real like I always come like right now when we are in those times where you see mothers killing their children and, and children killing their parents. Right now, one of the biggest, uh, number one um, hits on Netflix is the story of Gabriel Hernandez. You know, and that's the story of a little kid where he was tortured to death by his mother. So, of course, we're in those times where the last time we were in that time was the Great Flood because there were so many abominations going on in the world because of supposedly rights, which is great. We should be able to choose what we want in life, but it has to be something out of good. And we have to know that we have the power to be good or bad, right? So if you have someone imposing you to constantly say that you're a sinner, which that's what the Catholic Church says, like every time you do something, you go, I know because that's how I grew up, you end up going to pray to a priest and then the priest tells you, oh, you have to say three Ave Marias or whatever. Well, that Ave Maria or that prayer that they tell you to say, you say, I am a sinner, I am a sinner. When you continue to say that, you become it. It's kind of like the book, um, The Secret. A lot of people have read that or it's also on Netflix. 
and it's basically the lost um, gospel of Thomas, which is the sayings that God, that Jesus had while he was on earth, right? So his saying was that when you think it and you feel it, when you put your thoughts and your emotions together, you will move mountains. That's, you know, the great secret. They talk about that. This was a gospel that King James, because King James is the one that did most of put this Bible together, um, decided not to put this in there. And I believe that this kind of gives you the power because in the Bible we do have, in the regular Bible and King James, that it does say that uh, we can move mountains, but it never told you how. So how are we going to be able to move mountains? Well, the universe is so beautiful and God created it so amazing that anything we think we can create. We're, we're creators, right? And um, this world is a paradise that God gave us. And so I think we're, you know, the story again about Jesus, it was a, it's a beautiful story that keeps on going because when he rose from the cross, he didn't want to forget anybody in the world. He wanted to, you know, because all of his children from the from the earth are his right the people of the bible are his children so he wants to make sure that everybody knows the word so now with uh, mormons the uh which is john smith the prophet or the one that wrote the bible of the mormons uh they say that jesus when he left jerusalem after he rose he ended up coming to the americas and he revealed himself to uh, John Smith. So every religion has some truth, but again, everybody puts their own input because I don't know why. But anyways, John Smith, you know, created this a religion again in the name of Jesus, right? And the revelations that they had about him he coming here. Um, but then, you know, he added a lot of other stuff he wanted maybe to be conformed for his own self. Um, and I don't want to get too much into that, but, um, Again, in, in one thing with the Mormons has been that they've never been equal with women. And with, um, with God, we are equal. We are his children, right? And um, even with Jesus and Marie Magdalene, right? In the Bible, they've erased her completely after her caring for the body of Jesus. Now, um, after they brought him down from the cross... Uh, it was his mother and his sister and Marie Magdalene, um, what they called the prostitute in the Bible or what they called the whore. She was a woman of the world and Jesus forgave her and she was always with him. So they were saying that maybe that was his companion. Well, the truth is, and what we were based on only facts is that she cleaned the body. So if somebody's cleaning my body, I'm thinking that the person that's gonna prepare my body um, is going to be someone extremely close, right? So um, there we know that she was close. So he treated women just as much equal as himself. So again, that, that's the Mormons that they changed it up a little bit, right? And then we have also Jehovah Witnesses. So they also have some truth, right? Because they believe that heaven is, um, heaven is earth. And yes, this is earth. This is the promised land. We are, if you really think about it, we are able to do anything we want. We have everything at the tip of our hands. Everything is accessible. This is the only country in the world that's based on God. You know, that's why there's always been an alliance with the United States and Jerusalem. And it's now that, um, that things, you know, the church was, you know, being rebuilt and it, it says in revelations that my church will be rebuilt and um, and scripture doesn't lie I mean we're seeing all these things that are happening right now in the world like we cannot close our eyes to what's happening and um, you know God has given me you know taking me to these places and he's letting me see everything you know firsthand you know so I can tell you guys firsthand that this is real like when I went to Rome I also remember going to um, because Constantine's mom did really truly believe in Jesus that was the Messiah so she was on a mission to get any relic or anything she could get from Jerusalem and bring it to Rome so that they can build things around it so she brought like she brought the stairs. I have pictures of me, uh, you know, 
praying in front of these stairs that they brought from Jerusalem. And they have them in Rome in one of the, um, and it's guarded, it's in Italy. I'll, I'll post a picture as well with this. Um, and then she would bring all kinds of stuff because she wanted these relics. And it wasn't about relics, and that was the whole thing. Again, you know, like I learned all this stuff now that God doesn't want you to, you know, uh, worship things. That's why we're going through this. We used to worship, you know, these idols and these people and these royals and all these people that in reality, they've just been false God, you know. And it says in Revelations 22 that, that his first plague, yeah, the first plague is not from him but he's allowing it to clean the earth and it will be clean from politicians and false gods. It says this in Revelations. Like I can't, like a preacher was saying last Sunday from Chino, like you can't make this up. Like this is why a lot of people have been saying for a long time, it's history, his story. I mean, if you follow the history, you follow the truth, you know, but we've kind of been in a phase, you know, in a kind of like, um, like a sleep, you know, a lot of people say this is a great awakening because now finally all the pieces are being put together. Well, God has been working with so many pieces around the world with his people to make everything so perfect. And now everything is, um, it's like a puzzle. It's like it was missing key pieces. And now uh, we're in that time. That's why it's like the great awakening or revelations or the um, golden era, which I talk about in December people that believe in the stars and the planets um, because we all have some right again we go back to, to that we all have some right you know when we go to astrology we're going into the time of Aquarius we've been in the time of Pisces for the last 2,000 plus years which means it's all the time of Christ which again Pisces it means Christianity and we've been in the time of belief um, and, and that's been the dark ages. Now we're going into a time of Aquarius and that chapter is actually going to be about 25, um, it's going to be split up in four within, uh, 25,000 years. So we're going to have the time, the golden era, the silver era, the bronze era, and then the darkness. And right now we're coming out of the darkness going into the golden era. So people that believe in astrology, they understand that we've been coming into that. The Mayans, the Aztecs were correct as well when they said that their calendar finished. It wasn't that the world had finished. We were going into the cusp of... Uh, Aquarius which was the golden era which was a new time and we've been going into that time for seven years and that's been the seven years that we've been seeing so much so um, again like God is so wonderful that he's been um, working with everybody and of course we're all his children you know so it's up to us to rise up and take this opportunity because I know a lot of people are going to die it's happening right now in front of our eyes and if you don't believe it please look it up I have friends around the world and it's affecting everybody I know these people people that are related right now I have a friend that just called me from the other side of the world and I'm not gonna say who and she's not feeling good and she can't get a test and she was crying and I'm telling you this is affecting the world this is affecting everybody so we need to be vigilant right now there's no coincidence this is happening in Passover if you don't know what Passover is if you don't know what Easter is it's when they crucified Jesus and then he rose. Easter is when he actually rose. That's why people celebrate. And that's what we're going through. And God's been telling you, in the Bible, it tells you to do a 40-day fast. I'm not telling you not to eat for 40 days, but you could do the intermittent fasting. There's no coincidence that God has been putting in everybody. It's becoming like a trend to do intermittent fasting. Why? Because God's preparing you for that. This virus attacks acidic bodies. It's telling you from the beginning of time that when you fast, it's good for the body, it's good for the soul, it's good for the mind, because we all know the perfect answer for within ourselves, but the only way we're gonna know that answer is if we clean ourselves from all the excess, all the acid, all the negative. And that doesn't only mean food, it means toxic people in your life. We have to really take a look at ourselves. You know, after I wrote the book, Rescuing Myself, 
And that was, again, a message from God. I didn't know to the full extent what it was, but I wrote the book. And when I was promoting the book, they would only give me about three minutes if I was lucky to even say anything. Or even sometimes I had 30 seconds. Like, what am I going to say in 30 seconds that's going to change somebody's mind? So I was cornered into writing something, and it was so clear. It was, I mean, I literally sat down and I wrote it out. I said, okay, the message is simple. We're eating trash. We need to start from scratch. So I said, Noah. First letter, nutrition. Second letter, opportunity. Third letter, A, um, action and accountability. The last one, history, and it was that simple. And why nutrition? Because we're so fogged with everything, all the chemicals, all the, all the um, uh, fillers, the man-made stuff that we're so blocked that we can't even think. Like science can back it up. We eat bad things, acidic things. If we eat uh, man-processed uh, things, they end up becoming heavy metals. Fluoride is heavy metals. They end up... Uh, becoming residue in your brain, which causes number one cause of Alzheimer's. And it clouds your thinking. It clouds your true self. That's why nutrition is so important. And we can do that right now. We can cook. We have all the time in the world. No one's going to kick you out of your house legally. No one's going to take your car legally right now. We're all going through this around the world at the same time. Take focus for what's important. The second one's opportunity. Take this opportunity to get to know your family. Get to know you. What is your purpose? I keep telling my friends, you know, it's like we either come out of this like Wonder Woman's, you know, we come out of here stronger than ever, you know, because we have all the time, or we come out here the worst. Because we're going to see the truth. When things go down, that's when you see people's true colors. So it's your time to be in control of that. Take the opportunity. Get to know your family. Get to know you. Get to do the things that you always wanted to do, but you never had time. Now you have time. Opportunity. The next one is action and accountability. God gives you will. You can do anything you want in this world. That's why he gives you will. Do whatever, but it's going to come with a consequence. An accountability so be accountable and the last one which is so so important is history we all have a purpose we all got here for a reason we're all born for a reason when you start looking at purpose you start to find everything you start to when you live your purpose you do live in paradise when you do that everything's beautiful because your expectations what you wanted at one point, if you let God guide you, if you really just do things out of love, it's beautiful. Not your agenda. Just let God guide you. Do things out of love. Every time we're presented with a different thing in our life, those things that come at us, we can choose bad or good. So you have to choose. If we can do things out of love, we're going to always continue to do things good. So I want to wrap it up, leave it at that. I love you guys. I don't want to take up any more of your time. If you have any questions, if you need anything, please message me and please share the message because together we are stronger and we're all in this together. Sending you guys a lot of love and a lot of peace. Blessings. Bye-bye.